you hate going to bed you know it's going to be a tough battle every single time and that makes you frustrated you know you should sleep you know it's detrimental not to sleep and there you are laying in bed losing on your essential recovery and you need to get up by 7 a.m oh my god it's already 12 30. let's stop this madness this was me the past few years when you start taking your life seriously then you stress about what food you eat how much you sleep that stress destroyed me at this point basically it doesn't even matter if i'm doing the healthy habits because this elevated stress is killing me slowly but i cracked it i rarely experience such nights these days of course i educate myself a lot i read 10 books on sleep i watch dozens of podcasts and it finally got me to understand sleep fully it's not a random action that just occurs randomly at night it actually follows a pattern of behaviors and of course i made a whole guide on it that was the first video on my channel you can check it out but i'm gonna be uploading an updated version soon with much more experience and much more knowledge which i ingested throughout the past year but this is not what i wanted to talk about here you read the title you are 100% going to bed at the wrong time I know that for a fact because let me tell you this concept there are really four important things when it comes to how good you sleep and one of them is called the timing at what time you go to sleep now you may think oh yeah I should go to sleep at 9 10 p.m. and of course wake up at 6 7 a.m. right it, it makes sense nope not exactly true perfect sleep timing differs from one person and another and yeah you're different than I and guess what it's written in your genes. Basically, they found that more than 100 genes are related to your circadian rhythm and plays a part in its predisposition. The clock that controls when you're asleep, when you're awake, and at which time of the day are you most alert. The premise here is to find out what your clock says and then respect it. Do what it wants you to do, following its ways. And most likely, if you're not feeling sleep when you go to bed, you're not respecting your clock. You're going to bed at a completely different time. Either too early or late and after you find out at which time you should go to bed then you can organize your day in a way that you know what task you should be doing earlier what later on and at what time you should actually lay down and those behaviors and activities you can learn from the full guide i have on my channel learning what behaviors promote sleepiness and what behaviors promote wakefulness but let's get practical how do you even know what archetype you are when you should be asleep there are many archetypes it's a specter but there can be reduced to five extreme early bird early bird intermediate night owl and extreme night owl and it ranges from going to bed at 8 9 p.m and waking up at 4 5 a.m to actually going to bed at 2 3 a.m and then waking up at 10 11 a.m pretty big difference right but it makes sense actually from an evolutionary standpoint when you think about the ancient people they were all in a camp some people went to bed at 8 9 p.m once the sun went down but some people stayed for as long as 1 2 a.m just in case some predator creeps on on the camp. They lowered the amount of time they were risking it because there were still a part of the night where all of them were sleeping, but it's of course a much smaller portion of the night than if everybody went to bed at 8 p.m. But how do you know which archetype you are? You're gonna trust your intuition combined with the MEQ, which is basically a morningness, eveningness questionnaire that you can take online. And I'll show you how it works. So here's the test, the morningness, eveningness questionnaire. You're just gonna be answering honestly without thinking or accounting for what stops you from doing that like for example job or you have some things to do in the morning you basically want to find out here what would be the perfect bedtime and you answer all of these questions there's 19 of them at the very end you're just gonna answer the final question save your results and this re the result is gonna pop up here intermediate intermediate is basically someone like me who goes to bed between 10 and 11 p.m. and you can google what these mean actually in bedtime terms the best way to find out is basically doing the whole test and it will tell you what archetype you are but if you want to do it the quick way you can answer basically these three most important questions that will tell you pretty precisely how you should behave with your bedtime first what hour would you get up if you were entirely free to plan your day second what hour would you lay down if you're entirely free to plan your day and at last, at what hour do you become tired as a result of need for sleep? Answering these three truthfully without accounting for the job you have in the morning or some tasks that you must do go to a car mechanic or regardless of if somebody's stopping you to go to sleep. For example, if you have a younger brother playing video games or if your wife wants to read a book and she leaves a lamp on. This will get you to understand at what time you should be in bed. As for waking up, you cannot just calculate eight hours because it's different for everybody. Somebody may feel fully rejuvenated after seven hours of sleep while others may sleep for eight and a half hours and still feel tired. The best way to know is basically laying down at your supposed time once you understood your architecture type and then sleeping for as long as you can without the alarms and just see how long it took you to feel rejuvenated you'll obviously have to do it a few times because maybe you were lacking sleep 
the past night so you slept in the next day so you need to do it consistently you probably have to sacrifice like a whole weekend I'm not gonna lie you won't be going out and destroying your health that weekend but it will be worth it because you'll finally understand what's your perfect bedtime and from then on you just continue being as consistent as possible with as many days laying at the same exact time it will get your circadian rhythm to fully adapt and become consistent which is basically third of the four most important things I told you apart from timing and others. So how do you know this would work? First I told you the caveman story. They needed people to lay down at specific times so it makes sense for it to evolutionary develop and for them to survive. Then you have modern studies that prove that we have lots of genes that dictate actually how your circadian rhythm works and what's it predisposed to be like. You can teach your circadian rhythm that's the whole point. It can learn and learn but most optimally you would live like you were supposed to and what your genes tell you. Lastly I'm telling you it works. You don't trust me because you don't know me but I was just like you a guy who wanted to improve his sleep so badly but still would battle every single time I went to bed and I would wait for the next night to try and, and think I would fall asleep easier and it just wouldn't happen damn I hate going to bed but I knew I needed it and now that I know so much about sleep I can tell you that one of the most important aspects is at what time are you laying down and are you obeying your genes final tip in regards to this sleep timing is are you absolutely craving sleep and wouldn't do anything rather than sleep when you lay down this is a pretty good indicator of good sleep timing if you can still watch youtube or dm other people then i wouldn't really be going to bed whether it's your regular bedtime or not keep this thing in mind you absolutely want to go to bed only if that's the only thing you want to be doing right now and you will feel really tired at one point if you follow the advice i made in my full guide since you watched the video until now i'll give you something more to leave this video with and that's my full nighttime routine i do basically most of the time that makes me very sleepy at night i usually go to bed at around 10 or 11 pm which means that i've stopped eating by the time it's seven o'clock letting the food move on from my stomach by the time i lay down if you ate a really huge meal close to your bedtime i guarantee you'll feel the pain and you would feel uncomfortable which makes it so much harder to fall asleep and destroys the overall quality of it after that last meal i would ideally go for a walk clear my head breathe some fresh air and also walking helps with digestion don't ask me why it's just how it is i also witness sunset basically which is not only important because you can put it on your ig story but also it's an important signal to photoreceptors and retina in your eyes that it's time to slowly start preparing for sleep and start releasing chemicals into your bloodstream once i get back i'm completely detached from my life's worries and all the stresses and serious stuff now it's playtime i would either cheer with some netflix watch something on youtube even play video games but i'm not engaging too much with it, it those are just brain dead activities i do so i don't have to sit in the dark and look at my wall but it's really important since you don't want to warm yourself up you want to cool yourself down without ramping up you want to cool off both mentally and physically i open up the windows to get some fresh air and also maybe turn on the ac if it's too hot i don't want to give you the scientific numbers to which temperature you should keep your ac on it's pretty much different and based on your personal preferences so you don't need a scientific number it's just important to be a little cooler still comfortable while you put on your blanket because if i told you the scientific recommendations you would think i'm crazy last thing i do one hour before bed is turning all the lights down maybe leaving that one lamp in the corner so i can still see what's happening and that absence of light actually pulls a brake pedal from production of melatonin the most important sleeping hormone and you know about the pills but I'm here talking about the natural melatonin your body produces. After a while of sitting in the dark, you'll notice actually how sleepy you feel all of a sudden. And that's when you react to it. Turn everything off, go to bed and knock yourself out easily. You might be thinking, but Alex, electronics are light too and you said you play video games or watch Netflix. Yes, they are. That's why whatever screen I'm using, I'm usually lowering the brightness all the way down and also turning on the night shift setting that sets your screen to be a little yellow and I maxed it out, make it full yellow. It's much easier on the photoreceptors register it as day or night and you don't want them to register day at 11 p.m. And that's practically it, unbeatable. Works every single day and now I love sleeping. Now let me know in the comments if I should make a video on my morning routine, what I do in the morning, which actually may be even more important for both how alert you feel during the day and how sleepy you feel in the night than the nighttime routine I just told you. Let me know if you'd like to see something like that.